Today's show was brought to you by Reebok. Take your workout anywhere with the Nano X2 Adventure. Link in our description. Hey everyone, and welcome to our Rogue Invitational coverage brought to you by Reebok. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Today we are giving our women's field podium picks mm -hmm. with Jason Kalipa and Jared Grabiel. Jason, you're also getting ready for the Legends competition. You excited? Oh yeah, super excited. I'm, uh, what, today's Monday? And um, so I head out to Austin on Thursday from uh, out here in California. Oh man, how's training been? Oh, it's been good. You know, I... I uh, it's been fun. I, I think we're going to do one event a day. I don't know what to expect. You know, in 2019 with the Legends category, I don't know if you remember this, but it was a lot different. It, it was structured as like another competition. So they crowned a winner and it was like, it was like a, it was like a big deal and it was an individual competition. And so I trained pretty hard for that. And that one was fun. And then you get ready for 2021. Right. And that was completely different. It was like pairs. It was random. Like, it was like the rule set was kind of like, all right, so we're going to do some snatches, but if you can't really do snatches, like just do your best attempt at a snap. It was like, it was pretty like low key, you know, like kind of like, Hey, look, we're just going to go out there. We're going to showcase our fitness. We're going to have some fun. And this year I, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I, I couldn't tell you if it's going to be more hardcore, if it's going to be more low key, or if it's going to be a, a, a blend of the two. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Jared, you're also heading to Rogue, but as a spectator, uh, athlete manager, lots of different hats that you're wearing. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah, no, I am. I mean, Rogue is a really great competition. It'll be the second year in Austin, so I expect like a probably a, I don't want to say a larger turnout because last year they said it was sold out, but last year we also still had some COVID restrictions, I think. So I think they limited seating. So it'll be fun to see probably a, a larger crowd, um, the second iteration of the Austin version of Rogue. They're doing an event on Thursday, which, um, you know, a little frustrating that there's like more days and more to plan for, but at the same time, more fun to watch. And it's like a trail run. So I don't, you know, you don't know what to expect. You don't even know if you can watch it personally as a spectator, but uh, I am very excited. I love Austin too. So it'll be good to eat some tacos and drink some, some good coffee. <laughs> Love that. And more fitness because of that day added on Thursday. Jason, I know the legends aren't doing any competition on Thursday. Are you sad or are you excited to have like an extra no, day to get? We're having a happy hour meet and greet. So um, while we're <laughs> the drinking, opposite. While, we're, <laughs> while, while we're going to be, you know, having a, a, a cocktail, um, the individuals are going to be out there, you know, going after whatever they have going on, on Thursday. But yeah, on Thursday is a, um, a legends uh, meet and greet in the evening. And then we go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, um, but you know, look, if we had something to do on Thursday, that'd be fun too. Um, I just like to throw down. I like to have some fun. You know, my mindset's very much so um, just kind of rolling with the punches and going with the flow. I, I trained really hard for a jujitsu tournament like a month ago. And so oh, I, I really worked on like my fitness for that. And now I've just been adding in some complexity, like, you know, doing a few muscle ups here or there, doing some handstand push ups yesterday for the first time in a long time. And so, that's kind of when what I've been focused on because I don't normally do those type of things that often. And so I'm kind of just ready to rock, whatever. <laughs> Jason, are you at the point where you want to be teamed up with somebody who is going for the win or do you want somebody that's more like, Oh, like I'm here to have fun, but also get some fitness in. No, I mean, I think, I think I want to be teamed up with someone, you know, if we are teamed up, I want to be with someone who's teamed up. That's that wants to be competitive and wants to put out their best effort. You know, I think that um, that mindset just kind of permeates between everything I try and do in my life. Like, I don't want, I don't want to be, you know, partnered up with someone who just kind of go, go through the motions now, nor do I think that anybody that's going to be out there is going to just go through the motions um, because that's not the intention. Um, but I'd love to be with someone who obviously wants to perform well and win. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to take a look at our picks. They are very similar. I will say Jared, you copied my homework. You copied mine. <laughs> Do we have the same okay. picks now? <laughs> um, I think they're all very similar. But the cool thing about it is we all have different reasons for picking our picking our picks. So we'll kind of go through them. And then we're going to look at some of the other females that were on the list that we might have thought about putting in our top three or might be in that top five. Uh, so, Jared, I will let you start your top three picks. We have Laura Horvath. Annie Thor's daughter, Danielle Brandon. Yeah. So for me, I mean, when I, when I looked at like picking a top three, um, I went back and looked at like historical data over the Rogue Invitational. And of course it's limited, right? There's only been 
three years. One of those was online, which makes it very unique in terms of programming. Um, but there's a couple things like each rogue has six to eight events. I think this year we're going to have probably eight events. Um, I think maybe even the schedule shows that. So like I take that into consideration and then I look at all the events and rogue is, I mean, it's rogue, right? So it's an equipment company over 50%, close to 60% of their, their workouts programmed have a barbell in them, whether it's like barbell cycling or a barbell complex. Um, and then monostructurally less than 20% of everything you see in the rogue invitational is a machine, whether it's, it's been a ski, um, a row. And then last year they had the echo bike, but, uh, even still, like given the six to eight workouts that we've seen over the past three years, less than 20% has involved a machine. Um, so it's like heavy classic CrossFit with an emphasis on barbell. And then, so I, I took all those into consideration and I take like historical data, right? Like Laura is a dominant athlete. She's been on the podium at the CrossFit games two years in a row. She's one of the best with the barbell in the world. Um, so you know, assuming there's not a ton of high volume deficit, strict handstand pushups for me, she's a shoe in for first place. Um, and I think she's probably got a little bit of fire in her coming off the games. She probably didn't expect to be beaten by Mal. And, and so, uh, so there's that taking into consideration. Another thing is there's 11 athletes that did last year's rogue that aren't doing this year's rogue. And of those athletes, it's obvious, but one of those is Tia, one of those is Mal. And then of course, like in the podium contention, you still got Haley, Chris Aram O'Connell's not doing it. Brooke Wells is not doing it. So those are a handful of people that that like would make would have made the podium picks. Well, not first. If Tia was coming, I think we would have all agreed like that was an easy first. But so though at, with those out of the equation, Laura is my first. And then Annie is an interesting pick because I looked at it two different ways. Like on one end, you can say, oh, Annie hasn't done individual this past year. Is she prepared to compete individual? But she also hasn't trained at the level of an individual so maybe she's probably feeling healthier maybe feeling a little less beat up than the average individual games athlete at this point um i'm now granted it's been you know over a month since the game's been almost two months so hopefully everyone's feeling healthy and and fine but at the same time like just a year of training for the games is probably a lot different than a year of training for teams um so she might be the freshest she's ever been we know annie's a beast we know she was on tia's heels last year so for me she's a sort of a shoe in for a second. The hardest was third. Um, yeah, for third, I, I was thinking through, you know, I'm, I'm biased towards Ariel, but she's a wild card, right? So it's like Ariel has potential to show up depending on the, like what happens. And then of course, Gabby Mogala, like Gabby got uh, third last year. She beat Laura last year. She's so well-rounded. Um, but then just with Danielle getting fourth at the games, excelling a ton over the past calendar year, Last year, she was dealing with back stuff. So her performance at the Rogue is not really relevant. Um, and then just she's the most athletic athlete, CrossFit athlete, I think, that exists in terms of like general athleticism and adaptability. Um, and I think we'll see a little bit more of that. This There's a trail run, right? Like there's different things that I think we'll see. And with Danielle's confidence coming off of a fourth place win at the games, um, her comfortability, like just where she's at now, she's in a you know, obviously there was a little bit of volatility throughout the year. And so now that she's settled, I think that she's in a really good place to show up for the Rogue Invitational. And I think she's got that confidence and she thrives off of that confidence just from what I, what I know about her and my experience with her. So mm -hmm. that's, it was hard. Third place was the hardest one, but that's why I landed on that. I like it. Okay, Jason, let's take a look at your picks and then tell us how you, how you came to terms with, Annie Thor's daughter in first place for <laughs> yeah. in second and Danielle Brandon in third, similar, but different. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously Jared and I have really similar picks. Um, Jared, I mean, you know, he is really involved currently with the sport of CrossFit, right? He has athletes, he's in the gym, he's seeing these things, he's gone back, he's done his analysis, which I really appreciate. And obviously I have a lot of very similar thoughts to what Jared, you know, brought, um, forward. I agree with him a hundred percent, um, on Annie just for a second, because I've gone from individual to going team and your training really shifts. Um, you could specialize more on the things that you're kind of good at. It's a, it's a more fun environment. It's, there's a lot of benefits to going team, but there's also some struggles, right? You don't get to, um, if, or when you win or lose or struggle, it's, it's because of a team environment, which has its benefits, right? You're vibing, you, you can lean on each other. It's incredible. But when you don't do well, it, it fires you up because 
you wonder what if. And I, and I wonder for someone like Annie, if she's coming off the game saying to ourselves, like, what if, where am I at right now in my own fitness? And she's more fired up than ever to go back out there and, and prove that she's arguably, I mean, she is without a doubt on the Mount Rushmore of, of female competitors for CrossFit. I mean, she is, she has been so dominant for so long. Like I remember watching Annie get her first muscle up in the 2009 CrossFit games. And here we are all these years later and she's still absolutely killing it and coming, coming out of it after having a baby and then going out and performing and, 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 and getting back on the podium at the CrossFit games. Like she's just so remarkably um, inspiring that I had to put her first just because I think she's coming off the team. She maybe didn't do as well as they wanted. I think she's gonna be more fired up than ever to go prove to herself. I don't think she really cares. She has nothing to prove to anybody. She's already proven herself. But I think for, for her own self, I think she's going to go out there and really crush it. So that's the reason why I picked her over Laura. But I agree with Jared in, in regards to everything else. Like this, the rogue invitational is not really designed as a CrossFit Games. It was never intended that way. It's not really a test of fitness necessarily. It's a it's a fitness competition. It's 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 different. You're not trying to test for the fittest on earth. You don't need to go for two hour events and three minute events and whatever you want to make it something spectator friendly. You want to have an environment where people are fired up. And not only do I think that gets the athletes excited and the prize purse obviously speaks to that, but also I think that the, the events tailor towards someone like a Laura, uh, like a Daniel and, and like a Annie, in my opinion. So that's why I put Annie first, by the way. And Laura, I agree with everything that Jared said. And then Danielle, I, I you know, Look, I don't know as much about the women's field in depth as many others do, but I do know just from like seeing her background and hearing things about her, obviously coming from a track and field background that carries over well because it shows some like overall athleticism from pole vaulting. Like I don't know how to pole vault, but I imagine it requires a lot of like, we talk about those 10 general physical skills. I imagine it requires a lot of those. So her adaptation to other areas and also her sprint work not to mention she went to Sac State in Northern California. So I want to give her a shout out and put her in that, <laughs> like in, that. that in that in that third place. <laughs> yeah, and that third was like really tough because I had this switching back and forth in my mind of Gabby and Danielle. Um, and this is all speculation because it's only I only know what I see and what I what I hear through, you know, communication, but I don't communicate a whole lot about Gabby at, at all, really. And so um, all I know is what I see, and I, I know that she left her coach. I know that she hasn't announced a new official coach. I know that she's been traveling a little bit. Um, I think she's back in Mallorca now, but it, this is all speculation based off of what I see on Instagram. And so despite her fitness, like she's extremely fit and what she did last year and, you know, she, she performed well at the games this year, probably not as well as she wanted. Um, but it's, she's up in the air right now. So it's hard for me to expect her to come in and dominate if she's been traveling, like, you know, she doesn't know who her coach is. Like, what does her programming look like? And again, this is all hearsay. She might have a coach. She might be working with somebody behind the scenes, but it's based on what I know. And I, I, I know Danielle is settled and geared towards this specific event. I don't know what Gabby's doing. So that was kind of like, for me, it was like, uh, this is why I'm picking this person for third. Mm. No, I like that. And I, I think that when we get to my picks here, we're all, we're all thinking the same things because, uh, Jason, <laughs> our picks are identical. I've got Annie Thor's daughter in first, Laura Horvath in second, then Danielle Brandon in third. Um, and I would say, I mean, with first and second, it can really go either way. The reason why I put Annie over Laura though, is, you know, maybe the reason why somebody else put her second because she went team last year, Annie, was able to dedicate time to any nagging injury. She was able to rely on her team, all of these things. And not to say maybe she, she has been injury free, but she's had the grace of not having to kill herself every single day, the way that an individual athlete has to train um, in the same breath though, maybe we'll see that that is something that she needs to work on the next full year. If she is looking to go um, back to the individual division in 2023. 
Um, Laura, there's no doubt about her fitness. And I mean, as an overall athlete, I don't know how much you guys watch her when she's rock climbing on Instagram, but she recently posted a video and she's literally running up a wall as she rock climbs. So just when you look at like grip strength and the way to like move her body into midair is just so impressive. And I just think that she's also like a strong athlete, which we see at rogue year after year, I would say for Danielle Brandon. Um, I mean, last year, as Jared mentioned, she changed training camps a month before the games the amount of stress that that puts on the body of moving um getting used to a new coach all of even like um the the atmosphere the the heat obviously it's different from las vegas to florida and uh some of the elements that she wasn't able to be in control into leading up to the games. Now she's been in Florida. She's been in Naples for um, several months. She has probably her routine and schedule down. So seeing her place fourth at the games, I think really sets her up to now be even better and even more dangerous Danielle Brandon um, against the, the the competition at Rogue. Obviously, it's structured a little bit different. They're not trying to crown the fittest. They're trying to add these fun, entertainment, different elements that I'm really excited to see. But I think that these top three women that we all picked, maybe just in a little bit of a different order, I definitely think that they're the women who are going to be on the podium or maybe trickle down into that uh, fourth position. So now I want to bring up our, um, the rest of the women. So who were some of the other ones you guys were, mm -hmm. you know, toying with maybe that third place position, or you think will will land in that top five? Uh, I mean, for me, like I mentioned, um, if I were to choose a number four, it'd probably be Gabby because it was so hard for me to choose that number three between the two. Mm -hmm. Um, but then like for me, that three to seven range, like three, four, five, six, seven is really, really tough because it could be Ariel. It could be Cara Saunders. I mean, Cara showed up at the games. Cara is a legend. She's a strong athlete. She's so well-rounded, but this is a pretty good event for her. Um, and then Alexis Raftis is kind of a wild card too. Not like, not that she surprises us at every event, but she's excelling more at each event because she's this young athlete. She's great with a barbell. Um, and so for me, it's like that four to seven range could be Alexis, Ariel, Cara, Gabby, um, for, in my opinion. What about yeah. for you, Jason? I, I mean, you know, again, for me coming in, I, I, I like the people that I know, right? So I know Cara. <laughs> and so I know Annie really well. And so I'm, I'm definitely, I know Laura too. Um, I'm really rooting for those. Um, I think Cara, she's just so incredible too. Um, I, I I just remember the the year at the CrossFit Games when she injured herself and she was in such a dominant position to win. Um, she's just such an incredible athlete. And I think these type of events carry over really well to her strengths. I also think that it's been a couple of years since she had a child. I think she's had really good performances since. And I think that she's coming off of good games. And I think she should do well at this event. So I was looking at Cara. I think, I think it carries over well for her strengths, given how strong she is and how athletic she is. How do you guys think Olivia Kerstetter is going to do? Especially this will be her first appearance against the women's individual field. Yeah, I have her in my like top 20, which, you know, I'm no Brian friend, right? So like for what it's <laughs> worth. Um, but I enjoy in your top stuff. 20. There's 20 of them competing. Of course she's in the top well, 20. Well, I mean, like in my um in my <laughs> ordered list of top 20. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't done with my thought, Lauren. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me back up. In my top 20, I have her at 13. And okay. the reason because it's just really mainly inexperience and like there's there's no data to fall on. I mean, she's a dominant mm -hmm. teenage athlete, but this is a totally different field. Um and now, I, like Jason has much more experience here, but like so, competition day, I have very little understanding and context for that, right? Like, but I imagine it's pretty intimidating to step on the field, and she seems really even keel, and she's got a great coach, friend, training partner, Jacob, in her corner. But like, this is the most dominant, arguably the most dominant fifteen to twenty female athletes in the world, and so I don't have her as high as like a, as John or or Brian do, but thirteenth is where she lands for me. I think for me where I might be wrong is where Emma lands um, because 
Emma is a wild card for me too. I just, for both of them, I need to see like one more comp for Olivia. I need to see one live elite level competition, but Emma, I need to see another one. It's like last year we needed to see Madero's win rogue mm -hmm. to know for sure. You know what I mean? Like, um, and so this year I, like, I need to see Emma show yeah. up at rogue to be like, Oh, okay. Okay. Like and the clear. stress, the stress on um, the athletes for like an event like this is pretty high. I wouldn't say it's as high as like regionals were. So like, you know, when I was really competing for a long time, uh, you know, I saw the season shift a little bit. Their seasons shifted a lot since, but one of the most stressful events, you know, people would always ask me like, what's, what's, what was the most stressful? The number one most stressful was when I did a live open announcement. Those were super stressful. Even though they really didn't matter, they mattered. Like um, you knew you were going to qualify for the open for the next, you know, for regionals yeah. or, or you felt confident you would. But they were just super stressful because it was like it was you and another person in front of a bunch of people. And anyways, those were the most stressful. But the the really the most stressful of stressful were the regionals. And the reason why I bring that up is that at regionals, you had typically, you know, six to eight events. And those would determine if you qualified for the CrossFit Games or not. And I would just remember you'd have an athlete. Like I remember Sam Briggs in particular. She was so dominant. But there was this one handstand walking event that she touched the hand on the tape or whatever. And she didn't qualify because she got last place or, you know, not, she didn't perform well on that particular event, but because there's so few events, if you don't perform well, you're in a lot of trouble. Whereas at the games, it was a little less stressful because you knew you're going to have 14, 15 events. You are going to have a lot of opportunities to do well. Obviously you want to, but if you had won a bad event, it wouldn't cost you like the top 10. You could have yeah. a bad event. If you place top five, top 10, everything else, you'd probably still be pretty good. Whereas in regionals, or in this case, the Rogue Invitational, the athletes seem to be aware that like, dude, if they have one really bad event, it's unlikely, given how many events there are, that they'll be on the podium. And so that, that level of stress also plays a factor, I think, that, um, you know, if you're a newer athlete, you got to learn how to cope with that and work through that. Sure. Yeah, I think absolutely. Olivia doesn't really have anything to prove. So hopefully she doesn't come in with a ton of pressure because it's like this is her first live elite level event she's not coming off of like emma lawson probably has a lot more pressure of like coming off of a what she get seventh at the games sixth fifth emma lawson got sixth yep sixth she got six at the games so it's like almost the expectation is you kind of need to get somewhere around six at road invitational um so there's a lot of pressure there whereas olivia doesn't have she didn't just do the crossfit games elite so it's like if she gets 18th nobody's gonna be like oh we were wrong about her you know what i mean um she's a 16 year old kid so like uh or 16 year old young lady so um you know i think a little bit less pressure for her uh to perform what do you think lauren the thing about olivia it well i'll start with olivia and then i'll move to emma i think that Last year, Olivia was super torn between wanting to have another year of team teen under her belt or doing individual. I think ultimately, I mean, she made the choice that was right for her. And I know that she was speaking with her coach and other people that were involved in her training to ultimately make the decision. I think that her doing teen last year was a smart decision to set her up to test the waters for rogue this year. I think that will help her give herself an idea of really where she stands. But I mean, even when you look at the snatch in 2021, I'm trying to think of what year we're in right now in 2021. Yeah. She had the strongest snatch amongst any of the divisions I mean, this, she's a teen against yeah, like grown women she's who have, yeah, who have been doing this for, uh, I mean, a decade. It's, it's incredible. And that's just looking at her strength numbers, but I think that she's, I think she's going to surprise us. I personally think that, hold on, I'm just now looking at the rest of the women. I mean, even without like the top contenders like the Tia, the Mal, the Haley's, um, even the um, the Christie's. I think that the rest of this field, they're almost like closer. Where that's why it's such like a flip and a toss up of who will place where. But I think that Olivia uh, will be in the top ten. I do. As for Emma, I still think that Emma will place better than her because of the experience factor. Um, it's fun conversation. Hopefully, it provides some value. It yeah, is. Oh, 
I love it. Jason, good luck. I cannot wait to see you throwing down in the Legends division. Yeah. Jared, I will see you from the other side, yeah, not on the field. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Bye, Jason, guys. best of luck, man. Have fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I don't know what to expect, but I'm sure it'll be good either way. So I'm ready to rock. It'll be, be good. See y'all in Texas. <laughs>